Coming up next on the Jeff Curley Show, he's been the leader of two Fortune 500 companies, but he's here today to talk about his real passion. That's next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Not often that I host the Jeff Curley show where I have butterflies in my stomach, but I have to tell you, I have butterflies in my stomach because I'm, I'm interviewing a, a business legend, Jim Keyes. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, Jeff. It's great to be with you. Yes. So you've led uh, Fortune 500 companies. You've done amazing things. You've met world leaders <laughs> uh, and you're here on my show. And so th that it means the world to me. Let's, um, let's talk a little bit about first your background. Um, uh, sure. You were telling me a story before we went on the air about, uh, and we're going to get deep into education in a second, but why education is such a passion for you? Well, I I've, uh, I've been very fortunate. Um, <clears throat> I am a product of a very humble uh, household back in central Massachusetts and would not have had the privilege of leading two Fortune 500 companies or doing any of the other things that I've been able to do throughout life but for education. It was the big differentiator for me. And, and, it's, and it's an opportunity that's available to anyone. And so my mission has been to try to share that word and let everyone know that education is the great equalizer. It's the great uh, provider of opportunity. It truly is not about money. It's about freedom. And the more you learn, the more freedom you have. And we're going to get deeper in that for a second, but we're going to put up on the screen some of the companies and some of the projects that he's been a part of. And look at that. I mean, there are just household names. Uh, when you look at your own resume, Jim, do you say, I did all that? Wow. I no, did that? <laughs> no, I think there's so much more to do. Than I've got. Is that all? I've got, I've, got a lot more to, I've got a lot more to be done. Well, you're still a very young man, and, and so let's, let's talk about what, what you're really passionate about. And i got to tell the viewer, as we were uh, preparing for the show, I'm talking to him about this, and he, he gets misty when he talks about this because, because it's, it's, it's so powerful. So let's talk about education is freedom, and tell us all about this foundation. Sure. It, it, it began uh, back in my 7-Eleven days. You, you, know, you find yourself leading a large corporation, and the philanthropic budget is a very big piece of what people do in their communities. And... Uh, as with any company, you go through periods that you have to cut back, and I didn't want to cut back the philanthropic budget. So I tried to find uh, something that we could support that I could go to the board of directors and say, this generates a return on investment, a positive return. What was that? Well, it was something that helped our, uh, we have a very diverse workforce and very diverse c customer base. So something that engaged both diversity, and opportunity, and education. And it turns out that our idea was to go into the public school system, reach out to kids, let them know education is freedom. You can, um, if you stay in school and uh, work with us, we'll help you get a job. We'll maybe even hire you. I recruited other peers uh, that were leading other companies. August Bush from Anheuser Bush sat on our board, and Al Brew was the CEO of Frito Lay at the time. Uh, we created a group to reach into the community, and particularly public schools, and basically grow our own employees uh, going wow. forward. That is so inspiring. And uh, I want you to help me set up this clip because in a second we're going to play a clip from Nelson Mandela. But I want sure. you to help set it up for the audience. You know, the, the, the basic idea is to, to, to get through to everyone that their education, their destiny is in their own hands and not to let others identify who they are or what they are that it doesn't matter your background your race you know your, any sure. your, anything as long as you take advantage of the education that's available Nelson Mandela was a great example of that when he was in prison he got a group of his peers together and studied law 
ended up coming out of prison and became, you know, the president of the country and led the country. And so we reached out to him when we started the foundation and said, could you help us spread the word that this isn't just in Dallas, this isn't just in the United States, this is a worldwide opportunity to reach out to those and that, that have the opportunity and, and encourage them to pursue an education, to take charge of their own destiny. And he did. Wow. Okay. So that was a great setup. Let's go ahead and roll the clip now. For all the people of the world, there is no question that education is free from foundation will be an important force in making the world one world. Our wish is that the Nelson Mandela Foundation and the Education is Freedom Foundation will find ways to cooperate and reach out to our people throughout the continent. Please welcome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> when, you, when you got the clip, did your heart... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he was he was going to come to the United States. We launched the foundation at Radio City Music Hall in conjunction with the 75th anniversary of 7-Eleven. We had people from all over the world. Uh, our franchisees, our employees from 130 different countries represented uh, in that venue. And he was going to be there personally to deliver that message. He couldn't make it, but he did that clip for us and we were just delighted. And, you know, what a way to start and what a way to inspire. And that's the key inspiring people to be able to do anything they want to do. That's the objective. Absolutely. Well, you are a man who has reinvented himself many times. And one, since we're talking about education, you just wrote a, a wonderful piece and were featured in D Magazine. We're going to put that on the screen. And I want you to, uh, actually, the Dallas Morning News, I stand corrected, uh, talk about this op-ed. Well, the Education is Freedom Foundation gave me the opportunity to work with Dallas uh, ISD and uh, many years ago, Ron Kirk and uh, Superintendent Michael Hinojosa put together an organization called the Dallas Education Foundation. So uh, Education is Freedom started working with the Dallas Education Foundation and uh, for many years we did some really good things. But this recent crisis that the country has faced, the world has faced with COVID has done some really good things that, that uh, people haven't necessarily been aware of. It closed what has, I would characterize as a, a huge gap in technology as uh, the technology gap. And it has now, because of COVID, we've closed a lot of that divide that used to be there by providing Wi-Fi hotspots. Companies like AT&T stepping up, providing uh, Wi-Fi capability to households. So today we have a foundation that we've never had. It could have taken us 10 years to get there. The question is, what are we doing with those tools? So are we using it as a band-aid just to fix the temporary problem of at-home schooling? Or are we seeing technology as an enabler, a portal, if you will, to virtually unlimited education opportunity for everyone, the great equalizer? Yes. That's the opportunity we see. So we've partnered with um, Superintendent Hinojosa, uh, the Dallas ISD, uh, bringing corporations together to not just um, allow virtual learning to take place, but to transform it, to blow it up, reinvent it, and to create a world-class virtual education platform for Dallas ISD so we can show other cities and other countries what's possible right. if you have the tools. So like when I go back to my childhood, I, a teacher on the blackboard, I mean, that's, that's archaic now. I mean, especially with, in, I'm going to call it the video game generation of our young people, um, you exactly. really have to engage them, don't you? Exactly. Well, you know, and if you think about it, uh, the students are sitting there forced to do schoolwork uh, on their computer and their laptop. At least they have that tool. But then as soon as they get a chance, they divert to the video game and have fun. So they'll play 10 hours on a video game and have a blast. You have to fight to get them off it but they're really reluctant. And you know, it shows in the grades and the participation, it, it, the current tools have not been effective. But why not take some of those same elements from the gaming world, improve the graphics. If you're in biology class, you can do a 3D version uh, of a yes. dissection that would be better than the real thing in a, in a bio lab. Um, there are so many powerful tools, not just with the graphics, but also little tricks like in the gaming world, they use incentives. If you, uh, if you 
pass a module, you're successful with a module, you get rewarded, you get a, a new hat for your avatar. Well, why not create a world which is possible today with blockchain technology and the yes. security of something like cryptocurrency? You could actually keep a scholarship fund and allow companies to come in and give student scholarships 20 cent increments. Wow. So imagine you're, you know, you're doing a homework assignment and you just got 20 cents for completing it successfully. And it goes into your scholarship bank account. Mm. So by the time you're a, a sophomore in high school, you have the opportunity to have a bank account that pays for half of your college education already. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And, and it, that makes the young person look forward to school. I can't wait to get to school where I'm engaged and I'm learning stuff and it's fun and it doesn't feel like I'm, uh, I'm in a class. Exactly, exactly. The tools are there. And um, today we're, we're not doing that. It's no one's fault. Um, in fact, it's at all levels. Uh, I just sat in a, a board meeting on the, on the list of boards that I participate in was Columbia University where I was I'm grateful to be able to go back and participate, but they were proud of their virtual learning system. And what it was, was basically the same class I sat in many years ago, a teacher in front of a chalkboard, they were filming him. And the breakthrough there was because he had some live in class students and some remote, he had a, a clear mask. So that was the big technology <laughs> breakthrough, right? And my suggestion was we could take that same class and dial right into the PepsiCo boardroom and hear a decision about a bottling plant, then cut to the bottling plant where you see the product moving down the line, then cut to a Walmart where you're actually able to talk to customers yes. on a live basis and, and get their feedback on the product introduction. Just one of a million examples of how technology today as an enabler can do so many more things to capture the student's imagination. And that's what education ultimately is all about. Intellectual curiosity. How do I light up the intellectual curiosity so students want to learn. They just can't wait to learn more and, I, and, I to, be, and, to, and to turn that into their own freedom. Well, your right? excitement is infectious. <laughs> uh, we're, we're winding down. We only have a couple minutes left, but I want you to share with the audience that story. I asked you before we went on, is there one person that comes to mind when you think about your foundation? Uh, to tell that story for us. Yeah, this goes back to the, to the origins of the Education is Freedom Foundation, and it, it, it's the kind of example I have so many of, and, it, and it's what keeps you going, because you do these things and you think, well, that's, that's a nice thing to do. And then you run into an Adan Gonzalez, and Adan Gonzalez was this kid uh, that I met when he was giving a speech at Junior Achievement. And uh, here's the Junior Achievement Student of the Year giving a speech and um, I met him afterwards and I said, where did, did you participate in education as freedom? And he said, absolutely, that's why I'm here. I would not have, uh, I, I was a typical kid growing up in South Dallas. I, I was being recruited by my gang, my friends who were in, in gangs and I had a pretty tough life and no one went to school. I didn't even think that was an option, but education is freedom helped me believe I could. Mm. Adan ended up at Georgetown University. Then he went on to Harvard and got a master's in education. And then he went on to Columbia and got a second master's. And now he's working on a PhD. And in between, he came back and taught math in Dallas ISD. I mean, it's, it's examples like that. Wow. You gave me goosebumps because uh, I can tell this is your legacy. Uh, we're going to end with a couple of websites. I'll let you go ahead and, and, and rattle them off for us. Uh, what's the first one? Sure. Well, the educationisfreedom.com, of course, near and dear to my heart. Um, we're approaching 20 years of history and have done some wonderful things uh, for the community and for, uh, for the world. So that's, that's a start. We would welcome any help, as always, for that. Uh, but Project Dream Big is what we're talking about with Dallas ISD today. That's part of the Dallas Education Foundation, and that website is thefutureofdallas.org, and it is an opportunity to help contribute. What I'm hoping is that all of the companies in town will look at this and say, this is a return on investment opportunity. This wow. is a chance to, to, to be able to demonstrate the power, not of our charitable giving, of our investment in the community. That's what we want to prove. I love it. And I'll tell you what, what you taught me today. It's not just live a life, but leave a legacy. And that's what you're doing. So I, I applaud you and I urge my viewers to, to get in on, on this movement that uh, Jim is leading. Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much. You were great. Thank you.